again this week to hear God's message. And today he actually has us in Philippians, but we're just going to have a little conversation. So sit down, relax, and join me in a conversation that the Lord wants us to have. And before we do, though, we're going to pray. Because before we do anything, we should always pray. Let's pray. Most gracious and all wise God, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, we love you. We love you with our whole heart, our whole being. Lord, we love you so much because you first loved us and you love us best. Lord, thank you for the life that you have given to us. Thank you for the grand privilege to be called your child. Lord, we just thank you right now for your son, Jesus Christ. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. And Lord, I ask you right now to anoint my lips afresh. Lord, sanctify my mind wholly. Lord, every word that I say, everything that I do, Lord, let it be a glorification to you, Father God. Lord, we just love you. We love you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray and count our our lives to be a living sacrifice to you Lord in Jesus name amen God bless you dear hearts again for tuning in this day and as we just have a nice little conversation together know that God he loves you he loves you immeasurably so no matter what you've done in your past no matter what you did this day all you have to do is ask him to forgive you out of the depths of your heart. And he is faithful and just to do just that. He will forgive you. His son, Jesus Christ, has already paid the penalty for sin on the cross. And all he requires of us to do is believe. He keeps saying this over and over and over in my heart to repeat to you. So that as you hear this, over and over and over. Faith cometh by hearing. And so when you're fully persuaded, when you know, when you trust, when you believe Jesus Christ, He has already paid your sin debt, then you will turn to Him and you will turn away from sin and then you will be with Him forever. He is the one that can take care of all of our need. All we have to do is believe. And so the conversation that he wants us to have this day is for us to give ourselves away. Give yourself away fully. Give yourself away completely. Give yourself away to him and in him and for him. And then it will be by him for his glory. He has us today in the second chapter of Philippians. So we're going to read the whole chapter as he has had us to do this year. And there are only 30 short verses. So we'll read the whole chapter and then we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about some things. So we're just going to have a little conversation this day. So even if you don't have your Bible with you, close your eyes and listen to his word. If you have your Bible, please turn it to Philippians chapter 2. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disruptings or disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Hold forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have run, not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he hath served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon, as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, to my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. That is the complete second chapter of Philippians. And it's the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. In that church, there were all types of people. So in, in Philippi, is a big bustling city. It was a prosperous and important city. And so there were people from all over at Philippi. And so at the church of Philippi, these people made up the church from Romans to Jews to Greeks to um, those from Asia, from everywhere. So sometimes when there's, well not sometimes, almost always, when there is a group of people and that group of people or that body of people are from every which way, then no one's going to see things the same. The only way we can see things the same is when we are in Christ Jesus. And so the conversation God is having us to have this day is to give yourself away. Give yourself away to Him. Give yourself away so much that your mind, as Paul has written here to the church of Philippi, your mind is the same mind as Christ Jesus. When we do things that are selfish, when we do things that we're caring more about the other person than we are for our own self. When we give away not only our possessions, not only our time and our talent, but 
even that which is natural to do is to take care of yourself first. But if you give yourself away, you give yourself away through praying for others, through ministering to others, through um, giving a kind word, or just being there to console someone who is going through. God, He is glorified because now you have the same mind that is Christ Jesus' mind. When Jesus, He didn't count it as robbery, being God Himself. He didn't count it as robbery to come in the flesh. He did not lose His deity, but He chose not to expose His deity. Hallelujah. Meaning, He... If he had shown himself who he really was, then those disciples, those people who were around him, the whole world could not even have contained it, could not have beheld his glory. So he came in the form of man and was subjected to everything that we are, yet without sin. But he gave himself away. He gave himself away totally. So that we would not have the death sentence. The sentence of death eternally. To be separated from God. To be sentenced to hell. God himself gave us the opportunity. Through his son Jesus. The man Jesus. Hallelujah. Also God Jesus. Through Jesus Christ. Now we have life and life more abundantly. All we have to do is believe. Just like Jesus gave himself away. Give yourself away. The church, that was during the early days, as they were set up here and Paul had written, and on his second missionary journey, he said, you know what, if I can't make it, I'm going to send Timothy. Even though you may not physically be able to make it, there's somebody that you should be grooming, someone you should be pouring into, mentoring, those who are solid, those who are adults, those who are mature in the faith. Bring others along, those little, even little children. Bring them along. Let them know that there is the saving love and grace of Jesus Christ. Teach them, train them up in the way of the Lord so that they give themselves away. When we're all giving ourselves away, it's so much sweeter. It's so much better. And I have a beautiful example of that. Just this week, I witnessed a miracle. A miracle happened, and I don't want to tell her story because it's truly in my heart that she is to tell her story to the world. But know this, God performed a miracle. A miracle is when we can't comprehend it. We can't say that by nature or by history or by any um, works of man did it happen. But God, only through God is when you know it's truly a miracle. And so, just to give you a highlight of it, we knew that um, a dear sweet mother was sick and when we got the call we started praying and then it was on my heart as I was praying for her it was on my heart to reach out to others to have them to pray to join in in prayer and when we pray praying unified 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 in the fact that God is still a God of miracles and that he is the one to perform a miracle and we knew that it would need to be a miracle it had not manifested itself to the point where there it was evident that the miracle would need to be but when your spirit is connected with God's spirit he doesn't let you be sideswiped by anything you can't, you know you know, it just you don't know how you know you just know you know because your spirit man knows and so as he had me to reach out to others it's nothing that I did it's his holy spirit working in me because we're his hands feet and heart on this earth and so as he touched me to reach out to others. And then in faith, we all joined together on one accord. 
being unified in the faith that God is a God of miracles and we were expecting a miracle, not knowing what the miracle was going to be about, but expecting a miracle for God's hand to mightily move where man's hand could not. And God did that. He did just that. And so, he turned a situation that was dead around and he made it alive. Hallelujah. And so God, he did that. But the beautiful part is, as we were praying for her, I was actually sick. I was not feeling the best. I was to the point of exhaustion where I had to put my head down. I had to lie down on the floor. But at that same time, I'm praying for her. There was a group of our church family praying for me. <laughs> Only God would orchestrate it that way. Where you're praying for someone, don't you know that there are those who are praying for you? And God, He is sovereign. He hears all of the prayers and He answers them. Now, what is even more astonishing is the fact that not only did the person we all corporately were praying for get a miracle, but I also received God's special hand of healing and anointing. In addition to that, he, it's like I realized he just hits me with these waves of thoughts and just reassurance in my heart. That was on Wednesday night, Thursday, yesterday. Today is Friday, um, September the 25th. And on yesterday, there were five people, five people who reached out to me requesting prayer. And in God, He spoke to my heart this day that as we prayed for another and others pray for us, when we pray for others, God has others praying for us. And we're all covered that way. But each and every one of us need to be praying one for another, equipping the saints so that we stay strong, that we can stay holding on and standing firm in the faith. Because these are those dark days. The days are dark. This world is dark. But we, as in Philippians, we are those lights, and we need to keep our light shining bright in this dark world. God, He will do that. He has given us the way of escape, so we're to protect our light. But then we're also supposed to be praying for one another, equipping each other in the faith, praying for exhorting one another, so that our lights continue to shine collectively, for Christ Jesus, we make up the body of Christ. And so as we pray for one another, we're equipping ourselves so that we go out and fight the good fight of faith and showing others the love of Jesus so that we can also share with them the saving grace of Jesus Christ. The beautiful part of it is, if you weren't praying for me, then I couldn't be here to pray for those five people who needed help. And then those five people, they're praying for others. And so exponentially, well, as we are all praying for one another, God is glorified. And His hand of protection is on us. His divine providence is with us. And so He will be the one to exalt us. Just as Jesus laid down His life and He was obedient unto death, be obedient unto God and watch Him exalt you in due season. God is so pleased with you. All of you who have answered the call and joined in faith and prayer. And even if you don't get a message from me to join in prayer, know that it is your duty. You are duty bound daily to pray for all saints because we don't know what one another need. And then this day, as I came back from a doctor's visit, it was beautiful that I would have a 10-year-old to stop and pray for me. And I declare, I do declare, that as soon as the prayer ended and hands were laid on me, even 
some bites that I don't know where the bites came from on my arm, but all of a sudden I had three bites on my arm and they were swollen and it was hot. It was just horrible feeling. But once I received that prayer and the laying on of hands from a 10 year old, I felt God's healing touch in my body and the pain went away. The itching went away. Hallelujah. God, He is here. He is here and He is waiting for us to have that childlike faith to reach back and teach those who are coming up. Not only babies, but you can be grown but a baby in Christ. But God is waiting for us saints to teach one another. To pray for one another. Just like Paul and Timothy and just like Paul and the church. And then to give yourself away. Just like his friend who went and he was at the point of death. Death even. Epaphroditus. He came with the gift from the Philippian church. But he was sick himself. And so by prayer and faith and God's love and tender mercy. He was healed. And then was able to go back to the congregation. As a witness to Jesus Christ and the love of God. This day, as God touches your heart, pray one for another, knowing that you are being covered in prayer. So continue to pray ye for one another. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this day, our prayer, our desire, is for you to be saved. All you have to do is believe in your heart that God he has loved you before you even knew who you were. And He currently loves you no matter what you have done. He is waiting and willing and ready to forgive you. All you have to do is say these words with me and mean them from your heart as we pray. Most gracious and all wise God, I am a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I accept your son Jesus the Christ as my personal Savior. Hallelujah. I thank you now that you sent him and that he was obedient even unto death on the cross for my sin debt. He canceled it. I receive the gift of salvation right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, God, he heard it. Now you are saved. Make sure you pray. That's just talking to God and he will hear you and answer you. Talk with God. Ask him to lead you to a great Bible believing, Bible teaching church. And then continue to be equipped with his word. And watch Him change your life totally. Keep praying one for another. God bless you.